Welcome back to the Wildcast, guys. Hope you are doing well out there. I'm your host, Rod, as always. And in this video, we're going to be catching up with some of the important legal developments that have happened in some of the cases that I've covered in the past, having to do with the Arizona electors case and also with Trump's prosecution in D.C. Now, the reason I haven't made a video for like two and a half weeks or whatever is because I have gotten a promotion at work, which means more money, but also more work and more stress. And honestly, I haven't I just haven't felt like working, um, working, making videos because I've been working so much and I've been tired and my schedule is a bit different now. So um, all of that stuff has uh, to be taken into account. Some patrons have asked why I haven't been making videos, so I just want to give a brief explanation. Uh, but I hope to, okay? I don't want to do videos like this where I cover multiple video, multiple topics. Um, I want to cover single topics. That's the that's the way I like to cover the law, shorter videos. I don't like making longer videos. Uh, there's more, you know, probability for error and of me, of me misspeaking, which is always possible. It happens. Um, so yeah, I like to keep things contained and separate, but nevertheless, we're going to cover multiple things here because I missed, um, so, you know, some important things. And by the way, after we talked about the talk about the law, I will be talking about a prediction I got wrong when it comes to politics. I made, you know, I try to stay out of politics, but I did make a, a prediction having to do with Nikki Haley a long time ago. I turned out to be wrong and I'll be admitting that at the end. And we'll talk about what's happening with, you know, all the changes that have happened since I uh, since I last spoke to you. Joe Biden has is gone and Harris is in and now Walsh is in as the VP. So we'll, I'll briefly talk about about that. I'm not going to give any predictions. It's always a mistake to make political predictions. So I'm just going to talk about what I feel about it because this election for me is not about, you know, Harris or Biden versus Trump. It's about Donald Trump versus George Washington, John Adams, Hamilton, and the other founding fathers who I have a lot of respect for and I care about more than anybody else. And uh, Donald Trump is trying to destroy the Anglo-Saxon heritage of our country and we have to stop him. So I don't like Harris, but I will vote for Harris or anybody else to prevent Donald Trump from becoming president. That's my perspective. I'm a federalist from the 1700s. I don't agree with the Democrats. I don't agree with the Republicans. I am an actual conservative, unlike anybody else in existence today. Um, so I don't agree with it. I, any Anybody, okay? I don't like Harris, but nevertheless, I will vote for her uh, to prevent the traitor from becoming president. That's my perspective. You can agree or not, but let's get to the law. So the uh, the the January sixth case <clears throat> is back in Judge Shutkin's hands, and. Uh, Many things will be happening in it, but we're going to be talking about the latest that's happening. And secondly, we'll talk about the uh, fake electors case in Arizona. But first, let's talk about this one. So the case is back in our hand, uh, hands, and um, we're going to be talking about something I predicted last year. Okay, So Donald Trump has lost his motion for a dismissal of the case based on vindictive prosecution. He was basically arguing that Jack Smith just hates his guts, and uh, that's the only reason that this case has been brought, which is ridiculous, of course. The grand jury would have never um, a true bill the indictment if that was the case, if he had no evidence. He has a mountain of evidence against Donald Trump, and that's why the grand jury true billed the indictment. That means they said you can go forward. There's probable cause for prosecution on these charges. So you can go forward to trial. That's what the grand jury said. That's when they true bill the indictment. And that's why the case is proceeding. And Judge Hutkin has ruled against Trump in his stupid motions. And they're just pure stupidity, by the way, using a Washington Post article and a New York Times article to try to claim that Joe Biden is behind all of this and, and Jack Smith just hates him and is doing it for political reasons. It's absolute nonsense. And I told you last year that I haven't seen a single vindictive prosecution claim work. And the record goes on. OK, most of the time, not most of the time, I've never seen one work because uh, the government has enormous authority to file charges against people they think are criminals. As the judge explains in this decision, it's all the same thing. It's them whining that the government just hates them. And that's the reason um, it's happening. The mafia uh, mafiosos have tried to use this argument as well. Lost uh, uh, predictably. OK, because the government has a wide swath of authority to prosecute people who they think have broken the federal law and they'll have a chance. The criminals will have a, the suspects will have a chance to defend themselves at trial. OK, but you do get to go to trial. You don't get to toss the case before the trial even begins. So this is what uh, she had to say. 
Uh, he, meaning Trump, has moved to dismiss the charges against him based on selective and vindictive prosecution. There's slight differences between those two, but they're based very similar um, in, uh, you know, in the real world. But they're technically they're separate legal arguments, so the judge takes them up separately. But nevertheless, he lost on both. For the following reasons, the court will deny the motion. The judge sets up the legal standard. As I said, the government has broad discretion. To, as to whom to prosecute. That's from the Supreme Court's decision 1985, Wyatt versus U.S. Okay, and there are many other cases to back that up. Uh, and which case to pursue. So what, who, who to pursue, why to pursue them, whether to pursue them, U.S. versus uh, Blakely. This broad discretion rests largely on the recognition that the decision to prosecute is particularly ill-suited to judicial review. It's not up to the judges to determine who has committed a crime. That's why the prosecutors exist. Since English times, the county prosecutors in England prosecuted the criminals, not the judges. The judges were there to make sure that the prosecutors were fair and followed the rules at trial and at pretrial motions, and that the defend the defendants, the accused criminals, got a fair trial. But it is, it is not up to the judges to decide who to prosecute. That's up to Jack Smith or whoever the prosecutor is. But obviously, she goes on to explain that the discretion is not unfettered, so you can't just randomly indict people, okay? Um, it has to be constitutional, obviously, and there's nothing unconstitutional about Jack Smith's indictment here. The standard required to prevail is a particularly demanding one for to, to dismiss a case based on this. The defendant must provide clear evidence displacing the presumption that a prosecutor has acted lawfully. So they have to defeat the uh, the uh, the Supreme Court and uh, Anglo-Saxon precedents uh, going back to England where the prosecutors had enormous authority and the right to prosecute criminals to keep the society safe. That's where it comes from. That's that's what, that's what prosecutors are there for, to make sure that people who break the law are removed from society. That's their civil purpose in the in the legal system, uh, in the society overall. OK, and they have wide discretion to do that because usually the prosecutors are not going to go after you if you haven't committed a crime because they have to pre prove their case to a jury. And if they don't have anything, they're going to lose and they're going to embarrass themselves to succeed on either claim. A defendant must establish that the increased uh, charge was brought solely to penalize him and could not be justified as a proper exercise of prosecutorial discretion. So prosecutors have enormous discretion. The, Trump has to prove that there's some special vindictive reason why uh, Jack Smith brought these charges. In support of the vindic in the selective prosecution claim, defendant submits two news articles, one from the Post and the other from the New York Times. Citing anonymous sources, the articles explain uh, the uh, cautious pace and bottom-up approach the Justice Department undertook before investigating or prosecuting the defendant and those in his orbit for the conduct related to the 2020 election and the events of January 6, 2021. But defendant contends that those articles show that after prosecutors, <clears throat> excuse me, who are now part of the prosecution team were rebuffed while shopping the inappropriate uh, shopping inappropriate investigation around the FBI and the Postal Service. President Biden explained to his advisors that defendants should be prosecuted and uh, urged the Attorney General to take decisive action to ensure that the defendant does not become the next president again. That's not what happened, as the judge explains. The defendants, the articles defendants submitted uh, do not establish that his prosecution was improperly motivated. In the first place, defendant misreads the article, of course, to make himself the vict a victim, which he is not. The Post articles does not indicate that the Justice Department shopped around its investigation to the FBI and the Postal Service, uh, but rather that uh, in probing evidence of a broad Trump-led conspiracy to overturn the election, prosecutors took care to pursue concrete evidence of criminal activity through multiple avenues before for deciding whether to bring charges. They weren't shopping around. They were trying to make sure that they actually had a case. Otherwise, they would be embarrassed to bring an indictment against somebody like Trump and Trump would, you know, uh, lord it over them and attack the DOJ using it. So they want to be careful. So they, they look for evidence of a crime that they can present to a jury. If there was a crime, right? That's what prosecutors do. If there's no crime, they're not going to, they're not going to indict you. They indicted Trump because they found evidence and Trump is mad about that. That process reflects conscientious investigation, not 
political animus. Overall, the article suggests that the Justice Department was especially cautious about investigating a political figure like the defendant. Of course they, because they have stepped into it now. Half the country hates the DOJ because they decided to bring charges because Donald Trump is a traitor who doesn't care about our country or, or, or the founding fathers or the system they established. And because of his attacks on the justice system, just like you know the right wing uh, the left wing lunatics who attack the system the right wing lunatics are now also attacking the justice system because they're mad that trump is getting prosecuted and people are like uh, you know trying to do attacks on the fbi have done attacks on the fbi because of donald trump's uh words and uh and like i said half the country almost hates the justice system now because of this you know a lot of republicans who used to love prosecutors before Similarly, the articles do not suggest that President Biden urged Attorney General Garland to take decisive action against the defendant. At most, the Times article reports that by President Biden privately co commented on one occasion that he believed President Trump should be prosecuted. Of course, he, of course, he believed that because uh, he's a sane person and Trump is a criminal. Uh, on one separate occasion that he wished the attorney general would act more like a prosecutor who is willing to take decisive action over the events of January 6th. But there is no indication that President Biden ever expressed any such comments to the attorney general or to the Justice Department, much less uh, that such comments actually resulted in politically motivated action. Literally, his evidence was two articles published by the idiots at the New York Times and the Washington Post. I, I thought you guys hated uh, these uh, these uh, publications or left wing publications, right? Why do you why do you why are you trying to use them? So, by the way, the articles didn't say what he was saying. That's the biggest problem. Uh, but but I didn't like those articles either. They are way too probing, in my opinion. And them, you know, journalists going into things that they have no business. That these people are not lawyers. They don't understand any of this stuff. So the media, I have a problem with the media commenting on things that they have no idea about, which is why I hate MSNBC and other places and Fox News, because these people are not lawyers. And even the lawyers they bring on are, you know, idiots who don't understand the law. So I got I got problems with all these people. Uh, so, yeah, she goes on to explain that that was the selective prosecution part. This is the vindictive prosecution part. I'm not going to go over it. It's very similar. Um, bottom line is that he doesn't have any arguments, and that's why uh, he has been denied on all counts. OK, so the case is going forward and uh, and by the way, there, there'll be a hearing probably at the end of August or next month um, after Jack Smith and the DOJ gets their stuff together. Uh, the, Jack Smith himself has asked for a pause because I think they want to discuss how they want to move forward, which is normal. You shouldn't just jump into things just because you can. You should plan things in a smart way and how you're going to present your arguments. So the DOJ and Jack Smith are going to be looking this case over and how they want to proceed. But uh, by probably by the end of this month, we will be having um, an evidence hearing to determine what is and is not official actions and which charges can and cannot stand in the case in this case in the DC um, uh, uh, election interference case okay so um, so look forward to that I'll be covering that because that's very important when it happens but for now the case is moving forward and Trump has lost the latest thing coming out of here because uh, his arguments are literally uh, trying to use articles to dis uh, uh, media articles to dismiss his case, which is, uh, of course, pathetic, and it didn't work. Next, I made a video back about, what was it, three months ago, the video you're seeing over here, which I'll put up, link up here. I told you guys that the prosecutors in Arizona had a slam dunk case on this, uh, on this election, in, uh, this fake electors case. And I told you guys that most of these people, if they don't cooperate or do anything, they're, they're going to go to prison. OK, because this was a this was a document. This is basically a, a like legal documents case where fake electors signed government documents saying that they were the official electors. Uh, for Arizona instead of the actual electors. They were literally, they have, there's government papers with their signatures that are evidence of a crime. So of course they were going to get convicted, okay? So that's why Jenna Ellis, just like in Georgia, was the first one to get a non-prosecution agreement, basically. She's not getting, she's not, it's not a plea agreement, right? She has, she's basically decided to cooperate and all the charges have been dismissed. And this is very bad news for Giuliani and probably other people as well. Uh, as I showed you guys before, there are many people who are indicted here. So uh, Giuliani is just one. There's Mark Meadows, there's Bo Boris Epstein, Christina Bob, John Eastman, um, Mike Roman, 
and uh, Kelly Ward, who's I think she's still head of the GOP over there, uh, and a whole bunch of other idiots uh, related to Trump. So there's a lot of big fish in this pond. And the reason that the prosecutors that Chris Mace's office would have granted Jenna Ellis a get out of jail free card is because she has given so much direct evidence against people like Giuliani and probably John Eastman because they were involved together there. He was involved in Arizona. She probably sold out all of them. That's the, that, She didn't even get, a, it's not even a misdemeanor. She's going free. That means that she gave enormously, uh, she was charged with felonies that carried up to like 25 years plus in prison, Jenna Ellis, and all of them were. The the way to like the fact that she's actually getting no prison time whatsoever and is not pleading guilty to anything, that means that she gave such good evidence to the prosecutors that they're willing to just let her go. I can't. Have, I've never seen anything like this. Like usually, uh, you get you get a lesser charge in Georgia. She did not go free. She had to plead guilty to something because because uh, assuming that uh, the evidence she gave was good but not that good. Here she's getting a get out of jail free card. They dropped all the charges against her from the indictment, okay? She was indicted alongside all these people. So where's the indictment? So we, we went over the indictment in my last video, but here are all the people that were charged. They were charged with felonies, class two, class five, <laughs> class four felonies, forgery, fraudulent schemes and practices, fraudulent schemes and artifices, conspiracy. So here is the statement from the criminal division of the uh, attorney general's office, Chris Mace's office. And uh, this is what happened, okay? We previously had a proffer or free talk. That's like a queen for a day version uh, for the federal prosecutors. That's when you uh, bring somebody in and say, okay, we're going to give you an opportunity to give us all the evidence you have. And if we like it, then we'll give you, you know, a lenient sent a lenient uh, a deal. Okay. Here, she's literally getting the tr charges dropped because she had such good evidence that the prosecutor said, okay, you have great evidence. And, um, and if you promise to testify against these people that we want to take down, then we'll give you a get out of jail free card, which is what she's gotten here. I, again, I can't emphasize this. Usually nobody gets this. She had to have she had to have presented them with like damning evidence against um, bigger crooks here, like Giuliani, for example, John Eastman, Mark Meadows, things like that, uh, to get this kind of deal. So I can't even imagine what the prosecutors have now against the others. So after the story came out about Jenna Ellis and the charges being dropped against her, that means that she's cooperating with the prosecutors. A story came out that another person has flipped, and then we found out that that person was a Republican activist, who was a Trump supporter, obviously, and a fake elector. Lorraine Pellegrino had also um, pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor version of the charges against her and has agreed to cooperate with the prosecutors, basically. So on Tuesday, Pellegrino pleaded guilty to a single misdemeanor charge of filing a false instrument. Uh, that's a lesser version of uh, the charges that were the felony charges that were uh, filed against her in the indictment. Clearly, she's agreed to cooperate. That's why she got a lesser charge. And um, and yeah, so she's going to be one of the people that they get evidence from and that they use at trial against whoever doesn't take a plea agreement or doesn't get a one. So the prosecutors have to offer one and the defense has to accept it. Sometimes either one cannot happen. Sometimes prosecutors don't offer plea agreements because they want to get they want to put that person in prison. They're not giving him any they're not giving any breaks to them. OK, uh, but sometimes they do because they think there's bigger people they want to take down. So they give, uh, you know, what some kind of agreement, a non-prosecution agreement or, you know, plea agreements to get them to cooperate against a bigger fish they want to take down. That false instrument was uh, the fake elector certificate declaring Trump had won the election, the electoral votes in Arizona, despite his defeat by President Joe Biden. So she's one of the fake electors. And now she has pleaded guilty. Okay, this is a very bad sign. I suspect that even more people will be pleading guilty now. Okay, now let's go back to um, Jenna Ellis's agreement here. This is a letter that was written by the Attorney General's office to the uh, lawyers of uh, Jenna Ellis. That's why it says, Dear Mr. Brown. Uh, so they had a free talk with your with Jenna Ellis back on June 17th. As part of the free talk agreement, the attorney general's office had agreed to evaluate in good faith whether cooperation is in the uh, state's best interest. In doing so, the attorney general's office has determined that cooperation is in its best interest because apparently she has good information to prevent any misunderstandings and to document its offer of cooperation. The terms of the state's offer are below. This offer must be signed by all parties. So they explain what she has to do in order to retain this get out of jail free card. 
basically she has to cooperate with whatever they want her to cooperate with okay the state of arizona will dismiss the currently uh, pending charges against jenna ellis filed in the indictment for conduct included and in connection with both arizona uh, attorney general's office investigation and the indictment issued in uh the state grand jury uh, 81 jenna ellis shall waive the free fifth amendment privilege against self-incrimination and shall provide truthful information in any and all interviews given to representatives of the uh AG's office in Arizona and shall testify completely and truthfully at any time and place requested by the Arizona Attorney General's office. Okay. In any criminal trial or civil proceeding, whatever, that's what they go on to explain here. So basic stuff. Uh, all such information and testimony from Jenna Ellis shall be truthful honest and candid and complete with no knowing material false statements or omissions, which means you can't lie. If you lie, then the agreement is moot. Such information and testimony shall uh, include all criminal activity known to Jenna Ellis. Jenna Ellis shall be available for interviews by attorneys and law enforcement officers from the government upon request and reasonable notice. So that's, they go on to explain more details, but that's, those are the mo most important parts. And of course, another important part, if the AG's office determines that she is lying, that she has violated any terms of the agreement, the Arizona Attorney General's office may withdraw from this agreement and file charges against Jenna Ellis. So you have to be truthful. If you lie, it's all over. Okay. And it has been signed by her lawyer right here and signed by Jenna Ellis herself here. And of course, the Attorney General's office. Okay. So it's a done deal uh, for now. She's cooperating fully with the prosecutors and that's very bad news for uh, Giuliani specifically and other people. I don't know who, who she has information on because that's not public. So I don't know, but uh, she, she was palling around with Giuliani going state to state trying to overturn elections. They did it in Georgia. We have pictures there. I don't have any pictures from, uh, from what they did. Um, in Arizona, but they tried in every state, in, in not every state that they went to, right? So they went to many states together and she clearly has very damning evidence. That's why she's getting a, she's basically, the charges are being dropped by the prosecutors, okay? Because they think that letting her go is a price they're willing to pay to get bigger people, more important people who are much more criminally um, liable in their opinion. Okay, the prosecutors get to decide who they want to go after and who has committed the most amount of uh, criminal activity that they want to prosecute. So I respect their decisions and we'll see how it goes from there. All right, now let's talk about um, politics a little bit. I don't like to do this, but nevertheless, it is relevant. So first, I want to congratulate... Um, uh, Nikki Haley, because Nikki Haley was correct about a prediction that she made that Joe Biden will be removed after the debate, Joe Biden will be removed. And I said, I, I was dumb enough to get involved in politics and make a prediction. And I said that Nikki Haley is wrong and that he will not be replaced. I said that. Let me actually pull it up here as I talk. And I was totally wrong. The Democrats actually did it. And Joe Biden agreed to us. I don't want to just blame the Democrats um, because he agreed to it, which I think is very dumb. I still think that, yes, the Democratic Party might be very excited about Harris. I don't know what people are excited about, but apparently they are. Um, but uh, it all depends on what independents think. And if independents, I'm not, I'm an independent. I'm not excited about Harris at all. Okay. At all zero. I don't think she was, uh, I didn't like her during the primary uh, in, uh, in 2019 or whatever, where she ran against Bernie and others um and she's just not an impressive person okay so that's my opinion but uh but it depends on what other independents think and what people think in the uh swing states so it seems like she's having a very good day she's polling well i'm very surprised that people are actually excited about her um but nevertheless um nikki haley was correct about biden being removed or, or stepping aside but whatever whatever he's removed he was forced out um and I was, even though I'm not a Democrat, I was very excited about uh, voting for uh, Biden because I like him, despite my disagreements uh, with him on immigration. Uh, I think he's a good guy and I trust him to run the country. I, I, obviously, I think Donald Trump is a traitor against America and a founding father, so I'd never vote for him. 
So here is my uh, my opinion and my prediction on what Nikki Haley says. So this is not, this is a, a tweet that she put, uh, put out on X. Uh, mark my words, Biden will not be the Democrats nominee. Republicans get your guard up. So I uh, I attacked her and said that she's wrong. And of course, I still hate uh, Nikki Haley. But I always tell you guys when I'm wrong and when I'm right. I brag about it brag about it when I'm right. But I always, but I also tell you guys when I'm wrong. And I was totally wrong. I didn't think for a second that that the Democrats and Biden himself would step aside. Side, that he would be removed. So I was totally wrong. And I want to, you know, f- tell you guys when I'm wrong, because it's very important uh, to be 100% honest with your audience. And I tell you guys when I'm right and wrong. So here I was totally wrong. Um, and Nikki Haley was correct. They actually did replace him. And the reason I thought that it wouldn't happen is because I didn't think for a second that Biden was actually would actually, uh, you know, acquiesce because he's the one who decides, obviously, at the end of the day. But after Nancy Pelosi and many other top people, Nancy Pelosi is disgusting, by the way, after Nancy Pelosi and other people turned against Biden, um, he had no choice at this point. He would, there's no way he's going to get funding. His campaign was basically dead financially. And you need to, especially in the last three months, you really need to hit the ads in the swing states and you need millions of dollars to do that. And the donors cut off the money and the, the party basically turned against him, which is disgusting. And they're, they're pretending like they love him. It's sick. Um, so I am not a fan of Harris. I don't like uh, I, Walls. Seems like a nice guy. I respect his military record uh, as a veteran. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I, I'm not a fan. OK, I'm going to vote for them because, like I said in the beginning, this this election is not Donald Trump versus uh, Harris or Biden or any of that. This is about Donald Trump, the traitor versus the founding fathers. It's Donald Trump versus George Washington on the ballot. And I'm with George Washington all the way. I'm riding with Washington. OK, if I lived in the 1700s, I would be. And now I'm living today and I'm still riding with Washington. OK, I'm, I'm with the Constitution. I'm with the law. I'm with Anglo-Saxon jurisprudence, which Donald Trump is against. He's attacking the judges. He literally said that we should get rid of parts of the Constitution, like Article 1 of the Constitution, where it says elections shall be held. The time, place and manner should be decided by the states. He wants to get rid of that. He said he wants to delete that part of the Constitution, which is treason, by the way. Attacking the Constitution is attacking the U.S. government. He he wants to get rid of parts of the constitution because it doesn't it, it didn't help him win in 2020 okay this is the kind of disgusting german traitor that we have trying to destroy our anglo-saxon law okay he's waging war on our english law and people who claim to be you know who care about the heritage of this country like the heritage foundation are backing this guy you guys make me sick and you're not conservatives and what heritage do you care about do you care about Eng- english heritage or do you care about german heritage which one is it because this country is built on english heritage okay the, the heritage foundation are not conservatives they don't care about america Any, anybody siding with trump is not for america you're get you're waging war along with him against the founding fathers and the constitution so I'm not a fan of Harris, but I will be voting for her because uh, Donald Trump is a traitor and I'm not going to vote for a traitor. He's again, he wants to destroy the Constitution, destroy America, literally. The Constitution is the legal foundation of this country. Without it, we have nothing. OK, so anybody who's against it is an enemy of America. And that's what Donald Trump is. So it doesn't matter how you feel about uh, Harris or Waltz and their stupid, you know, progressive ideas that people don't agree with. And that I have many problems with, but you have to vote for them because we have to keep the country going. OK, we'll we'll fix the the policy problems later we have to save america first from donald trump that's my perspective you can agree or disagree but that's well that's why i will be voting for whoever the democrat is because they're the ones who can, who have the best chance of defeating the traitor and that's the bottom line um so i'll be trying to make more videos um than i've been making so far but uh, i can't promise anything uh but yeah, I'm getting back into I hopefully I can get back into the tune of making regular videos. But like I said, I work a lot now, so it'll be tougher, but I'll try my best. And that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you guys in my next one as always.